Lionel Turbine is one of the most popular, beloved, and best-selling pieces of machinery Lionel Corporation ever put out in the post-war period. There's a lot of reasons it's so popular. One, it's uh, big and heavy and it has a tremendous amount of detail. It pulls lots of cars. And it has 20 wheels on the track. That's a lot of wheels. A lot of excitement in one small machine. I've seen collectors, some of them, they collect scores and scores of these units and they keep them in drawers just like tools or in a toolbox. Nothing pulls like a turbine and nothing sold as well as the turbine in Lionel's history. A paradox when we consider the ultimate failure of the prototype for this model, the Pennsylvania Railroad 6200 S2 class steam turbines. In the middle of World War II, diesels like this early Alco unit were poised to become ascendant once the war ended, unless steam could figure out a way to innovate and be as efficient as these diesels were. To realize this efficiency, Baldwin and Westinghouse decided to ditch the reciprocating piston and use a turbine, just like an ocean liner, to transfer the steam energy from the boiler to the wheels. This turbine turns a gear, which is then geared directly to the driving wheels. Interestingly, this transmission system was not unlike what you would find on a typical Lionel locomotive, albeit writ large. The enormous torque generated by this geared arrangement meant that you had a much more efficient and powerful locomotive that could take longer loads at higher speeds. This was a game changer, or so they thought. After it was delivered to the railroad, the 6200 began testing in service and it became quickly apparent that the promised efficiency only occurred at top speed. At low speed, its efficiency was abysmal and in a mountainous Pennsylvania, it was hard to find terrain flat enough to keep those high speeds for long. The locomotive had been touted as the next big thing in steam and was promoted as state of the art appearing next to the legendary T1 at the Railroad Festival as their crowning achievement. It was during this fervor for the turbine that Lionel made their own version of this model, the 671, which was O-Gage, and the 2020, which was O-27. This model was very detailed and sported nickel rims. It didn't have magnet traction, but could still pull a lot of cars. And it was extremely popular. It sold well and was in many starter sets. In contrast to the increasingly popular Lionel locomotive, the fortunes of the 6200 were starting to turn that suffered major turbine damage in 1949. Here it is in the yard, parked, waiting to be scrapped. In contrast, the Lionel model was getting more and more popular and was experiencing improvements. The 671 was replaced by the 681 shown here on the sharp neck, carrying 25 cars with magnet traction all the pieces were now in place for this locomotive to be a legendary puller. The 681 was produced from 1950 through 54, with a pause in 1952 due to the magnetic metals that were required for the Korean War prevented the magnet traction from being implemented. Finally, the 682 came along in 1954 through 56. And this was the final run of the turbines for Lionel in the post-war period. The 682 was essentially a dressed up version of the 681 with a white running board 
and a bell crank addition in the running gear. By the time the turbines were out of production in the post-war period, the 6200, its inspiration, was retired and scrapped by 52. It's interesting to look at the parallel development of these two locomotives. In a way, the model and the prototype are both very similar. They're both interesting and inspiring machines that captured the imagination of the public. If it wasn't for the model being so popular and such an enormous success for Lionel, my question is, would the 6200 have been as legendary as it is today? Let me know what you think in the comments. If you would like, you can pause this video to examine some of the details on this model. As you can see, they were very faithful to the details that were on the original 6200. They also added a Belpire firebox, which is a trademark of the Pensy. Thank you for watching, and thank you for Tony Viviano for letting us uh, look at his uh, 671. Like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. I'll be doing more like these on post-war trains coming up.